thank you so much for joining me on this video this is a rescue mission for my neophonesia falcatas the ones that you know are the specialized ones to the left i've got kibana in the middle i've got shuteno here is setsusan and this is gojo fukurin they are in dire straits and i have not been able to figure out what i wanted to do since this setup isn't working for the past six months i have been mulling around what to do with these neos you see i put them in leka self-watering and added a top dressing of akadama because my original neo phoenicia falcata the classic one turned out to be doing so well in leka with a lot of ceramics around the base of the roots i concluded what could go wrong i mean you know i have one fan i can adapt them i used to have them in the classic moss setup i was fed up of the moss setup because in my climate i would have to keep that wet so much it would degrade and I would have to change it every six months and seeing as my other neo was doing so well I thought hey long roots on neo falcatas I accommodated them with long containers the falcatas in a self-watering setup so I thought well seeing as these are young they need a lot more flushing into semi-hydro they go. I didn't have ceramics at the time, so I used what I consider the alternative that I can also source locally, and that is Akadama as a top dressing to buffer against the lack of humidity to keep the roots growing. Anyway, back to the six months, waiting for active root growth, waiting for warmer weather. Normally this time of year, I would be remossing. I was thinking of using my hob material that I use instead of sphagnum moss and wrap it around the neos and use this as a substitute and give sort of the inorganic version of the classic neo setup. And then I thought we are going to go back to algae because my other mounts, they show some greening up, which is not an issue for me because those are, you know, nice orchids but if the mounts don't look very nice then it really doesn't matter that much but presenting a neo phoenicia is a different ball game and if this were to go green and icky i would be back with the same problem i would have to change it out and possibly roots would have grown into this media and that would have caused a whole different other gaggle of issues so today I am going to take these fans out of the pots, see if anything has happened within the pot. You can see my Kibana, it has such long roots that even the roots of this year have already stopped growing. But the one from two years ago, I've been cultivating in its separate container of water or fertilizer or whatever, and it has perked up since then. It's getting hydrated through that one long root, but it's not thriving. You can see I lost quite a few leaves at the early stages. At least now I've got some growth going. So I've got one root that is very, very accustomed to a wet environment. And then the Shutano. Oh my goodness, I thought I had lost it. What a trooper of a neo that is. If you want a robust neo that has got pretty blooms and a little bit different from just white blooms, the Shutano is a real trooper. That orchid should have died a while ago because it had crown rot from my constant misting, trying to keep enough humidity around the base. Some of the roots have died. At least now, thank goodness, it is starting with some active root growth again. And a secondary fan is growing from the main fan. The main fan doesn't look compromised. It has tried to regrow but yeah that little bit of green in there oof I just hope well if it doesn't make it I have put this orchid through so much stress I hope I'm not going to lose it that's why we're going in now because not doing anything is going to kill these orchids coc setsu-san also crown rot from the spraying isn't a happy root grower I can't see any roots have gone into that pot at all put microfiber over the one root that is long enough and viable enough been misting that microfiber still the mistake was made i got into the crown and we have the issue that we see now dire straits is all i can say my gojo fukurin well being the slowest of these it seems to have handled the abuse the best at least it bloomed for me last year it is still trying to grow roots and I want to get those roots into some ceramics. So we have to take these orchids out. First of all, I'm going to give them a good seaweed soak. If I see any long roots in the pots, I need them to be pliable to get them into the pot that they're going to go into. So let's get this started ahead. Am I concerned? Yes, I am. All right, a little bit of a different angle. I hope I can keep everything in focus. I'm not used to having the camera to the right of me, but I don't want the transmitter to heat up either. So let's get Gojo Fukurin out and see what we're dealing with. And everything is pretty much dry unless the leka lower down is wet. 
because of the Akadama. Yeah, okay. Not much to show for here, but we have one route that has accepted the media and we are going to take advantage of that. That is why this orchid is still alive, because of that one root. This is a relief. This can make me breathe a little bit more easy. So, into the tub it goes. Watch that root tip. I've got two root tips on the go here. Let's get that lecker off that root because I don't want the weight of it to snap it. See if I can do this without actually doing damage. There we go. All right, first one, seaweed. Sorry, did I say seaweed only? This has got calcium and magnesium in it as well. Full on soak. And I'll probably leave this in for a little while, maybe 10 minutes while we unpot the other ones and then I'll flip it around to see if that new root will lose its Teflon effect. That would be great. And of course, before potting it up, I'm going to be snipping off that old root there because I do have a root in there for anchoring. So I'm putting them on the patio table, which is right now partial shade. Let's get the next one out. This is Setsusan. Root, nothing to be cautious of here. Yeah, nothing to be cautious of here, which is sad, sad news. There we go. This one is viable, the single root. We're going to keep it that way and we're going to submerge this one in the pot in the future. All right, you little one, my profound apologies for the abuse you have suffered up until now. I hope to change that. Strength and growth hormones. That's what's going in here now. Shutano. Okay, I do have some roots in the pot, but what, what state are they in? Let's figure this out. I'm not going to be yanking. I don't want any abrasions on those root tips. Okay, I had some ceramus left over for this one. Ah, look at this. Oh, happy days. Thank goodness. Whew, I can't tell you how relieved I am. She's going to be okay. Definitely going to be okay. So, in you go. I'm leaving all the media on that stays on because these roots aren't long and dangly. We're definitely going to submerge as much as we possibly can. All right, last one. Kibana. Epic fail. Epic fail. Huh. I was even so kind as to leave Oh dear. I was even so kind as to leave the plastic on of the pot that she was in, just not to destroy viable roots and, well, clearly they did not make it. Lekka only. And I say Lekka only because, yeah, that's me voicing my observations here. And on top of that, large Lekka. Big mistake. Big mistake. So that can come off right now. And now it's me going to attempt getting these long roots soaked. So let's see. Sorry about the rattling of the gate in the background. I do apologize if I cannot edit that out. Okay, something like that maybe. Will that work? Huh. I may have to fandangle this one a little bit longer than, oh, maybe something like this. Yeah, that will work for this one. Seeing as that is the longest route, I can work with this one when I flip them over. Okay, everybody's gonna be like this for the next 10, 15 minutes, and I will flip them for another 10, 15 minutes, and I'll be back.
right, everybody's had a jacuzzi. Let's see what we're gonna do here. The concept is pretty straightforward. <laughs> the execution is as well, but will the results work out and will my Neo survive? That is something we're gonna have to wait and see. Crocking, large lecker, just because I want to save on the ceramics, just up to the holes. We're gonna do one and then I'll fast forward all the others. This is where it's going to get a little bit dicey. I've got my little kibana here been soaking away and I'm going to use this one to demonstrate what I'm doing here because all oh, the long roots. First of all the tag has to go in where the holes are so that I'm not stabbing around blindly there and then hopefully we can uh, maneuver the roots in without doing any further damage. Of course aesthetically it would be nice to have the orchid in the middle but if that's not going to work roots come first but I would really like this one to go in without that sound without that sound please and if you have to be higher in the pot then so be it so far so far no sound all right then fill around with ceramis <laughs> and I wish my ceramis was dry but I've only like yesterday or the day before sterilized it and everything and it's just not drying out fast enough and this has to happen now. I don't want to wait another two days. Now that I've made my mind up, I wonder if anybody else feels that way. If you finally made up your mind about something you're about to do, then you just want to get on with it, right? Well, at least that's the way I am. I can procrastinate for days, weeks, months, not knowing, indecisive, um, ah, uh, what to do next. Well, the moment I make up my mind, it has to happen, so I'm not waiting any longer. Right, Kibana is done. And you know what I discovered <laughs> while it was soaking? Kibana is trying to bloom. Can you see those two spikes on the sides there? Well, I see two. One is very clear. The other side has one as well. Will I let this orchid bloom? That is another question. And also, usually I top dress with lava rock, but in this case, I'm going to leave it for now just so that there's still aeration around the roots while the others will also get accustomed to a more water retentive environment than they had before. These roots should be fine. They had been trained to stay wet. The Valaman was always submerged in something wet. I may also further down the line think of top dressing with the white quartz that I have. Still indecisive, but let's get the other ones in and then just cross our fingers. Okay, huh, that was it. Just gonna fill up the reservoir, top the whole thing up. No need to be settling any of the media around the roots. And then it's just a question of keeping fingers crossed. I am iffy about the Setsu-san. I only have one little stubby root in there. I'm not iffy about the Gorja Fukurin. Not iffy about my Kibana. Those roots, as I mentioned, a lot <laughs> are used to it. And I dare be very, very positively hopeful that Shuteno is going to be just fine because that was the best root system of all. At least, hopefully, I won't be losing any roots now. I've also really raised them up, not had them so low. Adding that layer of Akadama was good for, let's just say, only my peace of mind, humidity levels, etc. But it wasn't working for the Neos. Now, let's wait and see. I really would like my Kibana to bloom. I want to document the blooms, but then the spikes would come off. I will have to weigh the odds whether I'm going to allow that to happen. It's probably going to happen because these roots have been hydrated through that water container in the past year or so. Yeah, I'm probably going to let Kibana bloom. But I really, really hope 
that this is just going to be it for now. And if I need to, I will raise Setsusan up a little bit and put quartz around this one. It's very stable in the pot, only by that one bit of ceramic right here that is just holding up against the rhizome. Anyway, they're going to go back inside where they belong, where they've been living, not exposed to the harsh elements, but with a lot of light. And yeah, fingers crossed. That's all we can ask for, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. I'm glad I got this done. It was difficult to look at them and not know what to do about them. So let's hope this works. Have yourselves a beautiful day. On one condition, please, though, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.